Hey, folks! Ah, Rudy with Timby's Empire. Third floor basement. How's everybody doing? Part five of the Q&A that never ends. I mean, it's 300,000 subscriber Q&A. We're just going to have to do it for the next year until I have 400,000 subscribers. Rudy, one question today. I have a perfect thing for your Q&A that I would love for you to answer on your channel. How did the Rudy that fixed and worked on cars for a living, slang drinks and worked in restaurants, and do silly shit with his money, turn into the Rudy that buys pallets of cards, people's magic collections, supposedly has a huge house, multiple properties, and the basement is a facade, as I've stated before, I'm very much interested in opening my own game store one day, and I know it sounds super timmy, as you've expressed before. But I've been accumulating product for the last 10 to 12 years. Oh, wow, it's a long time. And now, just need to know what my next step should be. Please, I know you're super busy with everything going on in the, the card world, but if you do a QA, and a I'd love to hear you discuss this topic. And how? It, oh, this is it. Because at this very moment, I feel very stuck at an invisible glass ceiling. If not, any sort of insight would help. Thanks for your time. Okay, so that's a lot of questions there. Let's start with some of the first few questions, shall we? Um, first of all, this guy, who is this? This individual's been hoarding product and collecting and besting, I guess, in singles and sealed product for 10 to 12 years. First of all, that's a very long time. So chances are... This guy probably has a heck of, heck of a collection. He probably has tremendous equity from the last 10 years. If he's really done it that long, he's probably up six, seven figures, depending on the volume he did. Yeah, so, um, so the question he wants to know is, how does a regular, everyday Florida man, you know, convert and break through that glass ceiling and take on the world and become, you know, a, a big shot or try to, you know, move up and do something with your life and really feel proud and... Um, this is kind of not going to be a very, this probably isn't going to be as much of a feel-good video as you guys might expect, but I'm going to give you a nice slap across your face and, uh, real talk that most people really don't want to discuss. So I'm going to, we'll jump right into it. First, yes, that's correct. I originally left high school. Uh, C's get degrees was my motto. I barely graduated high school. Uh, my family, I grew up from parents that did not go to college, pretty much didn't graduate high school, um, didn't really have anything, and they worked their whole life in restaurants, and for 35 years before they retired, and uh, the only reason they retired is because they took the money they made from slaving away of 30 years working in a restaurant, and they put it in real estate and rental properties, and they just worked and worked till they were able to pay off the houses, hence the 30 years. So... Uh, unfortunately, I was not privileged enough to be born into a 10, 50, 100 million, billion dollar trust fund. That would have been awesome. But no, I did not have that path, unfortunately. I had to kind of you know, kind of scrape and claw my own way, which, you know, I don't know. It's got a certain uh, fulfillment and certain self-reflection and self-actualization, all that fancy crap. It has a certain fulfillment to it. It really does, everybody. A lot of what I do now doesn't really feel like work to me. Some days can be a little difficult, especially when you deal with just a lot of rough people and angry people. That's usually the toughest part. But as far as the actual manual work, it's really not. I enjoy it. It's a labor of love. So, you know, how, you know, so anyways, at that point, graduating high school, obviously, you know, I was working on cars. And my first thing was since I enjoyed souping up my car and, you know, that was back in the 2000s of the Fast and Furious and, you know, putting all kinds of different fuel systems and nitrous kits and you know, exhaust and intakes and all did manifolds and different to our fuel injectors and reprogramming and all these different, all that stupid stuff. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. It was really the tuner, the truly actually tuning and doing that stuff versus just, you know, the ricer thing of just putting an intake and doing nothing was kind of a joke. But, you know, it was, it was a really fun thing. It was an enjoyable mechanical learning thing that I really enjoyed. So because of that, my family thought I should be a mechanic. So I went to school to be a mechanic. Uh, the only the positive thing about it is I learned a lot about cars and it saved me a lot of money in my lifetime from having to get car repairs. And that still pays dividends to myself even today. So the funny thing is, though, again, um, it just it was a terrible career choice. I hated it. Doing it as far as a job versus a hobby. When I tried to do that, it fell apart. So I was miserable. And I went in a bad direction. Didn't work out. And here I am in my early 20s and just dead broke. I had to start borrowing money from my parents, keeping a tally how much money I owed them on the refrigerator as I actually lived at home because I quit the job to go back to school for finance. Because at that point in time, I had discovered the stock market and investing, mostly because my dad was talking to my family about it with my grandparents who passed away. 
um, in 2004 from cancer-related issues and uh, stemming from smoking. So, obviously, you guys can see why I'm very... I always pick the smoking, vaping, all that stuff. I always kind of pick on those people because, you know, it's just it's it's just a leech on your financial situation, your health, and your future. And I find it very disrespectful to your your own children and people who care about you because you're pretty much saying I'm going to shorten my lifespan and I don't care what you think about it. So that's just kind of my, that's my opinion and my perspective on it. So at that point in time, you know, I was kind of frustrated because I couldn't get a job. And then I just went back to working in restaurants like I did in high school. And I started applying at restaurants to like bus tables, but I ended up, you know, being put right into serving and more of the uh, bartending serving pretty quickly. And I realized how much money and quick cash was involved. Um, at that point in time, you know, this is where the video is going to get more kind of negative and kind of really blunt. Um, the more negative and bad things that happened to me and setbacks and being broke and poor and being very frustrated, um, it kind of, it created a lot of anger and negativity, negativity in, in myself. I was very... You know, I, I would see other people or other very wealthy or successful people. And I did the typical thing that, you know, the Internet does today, which is I was very bitter, very jealous, very envious, very frustrated at people who had a lot. Because I, I obviously they had to have done something or born into it. And I, I started to create a lot of animosity and anger towards that kind of stuff. Um, and again, at that point in time, a combination of my own family and the grandparents and you know, having no real career and hated working on cars for a living because it's terrible. If you've ever worked on your own car and automotive as a hobby, it's a great thing. It's a fun thing. If you any of you out there who've ever done it as a career choice and you've worked at dealerships, I've worked at two car dealerships, turning wrenches as a technician and getting all those stupid certifications and ASC certification and the company certifications, continuing edge, all that stupid crap. Um, you understand what I'm talking about. Customer pay versus warranty pay. You get paid less for the same thing. There's just the company, the dealerships and the car companies, just, they just, it's just a bad direction long term for your health, your mental health, and your financial health long term. So again, I, I was really, so to sum up the, the question from five to ten minutes ago, honestly, so many dead ends and negative things happened to me. And don't forget the Ruby's X and losing my relationships with my significant others the girls or the women I had at the time, you know, losing all of that stuff, losing my grandparents, being dead broke, going into automotive, which was a joke of a career. I, I had, I had didn't have, the, the only thing I had going for me was my health. And I had great parents, and I still have great parents, in my health. That's it. I'm an only child. I got, I don't have a big family. I don't have any of that stuff. It was literally my mom and dad being working their butts off. And I saw that and it was working for them. So I just said, well, you know, if they can do it, I can do it. And I was trying to find what direction to go. And I had nothing going for me. No relationships, no significant other for a future, no career, no job, no money. Uh, my high school car, I had nothing. Nothing. Lived at home. Seriously. That's where I was at like 21. So to be honest, looking back, I really appreciate and understand the importance of bad things happening. It's really weird. I know. I, I actually almost appreciate and reflect and think about it more the more bad things happen. When an investment goes wrong, going through my first, I'm going to be smart when 2008 rolled around in my mid-20s, and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to start investing and being smart. And then I got wiped out in that because the market crashed in 08 and everything went to hell. So even when I started to invest and work hard, I still got wiped out. And at that point in time, the only thing that didn't wipe out and was still there for me was magic cards. It was magic cards. Starting in 2005, as you guys have seen in my old message board videos and everything, when I started to look at magic cards and investing. Through the 08 crash and everything, magic cards was the thing that was there for me. And I know it sounds cliche, cheesy, and kind of pathetic and stupid, but it always treated me well. They held their value. It created a real passion. It made me happy inside financially happy, and just the childhood memory, just the combination of all degrees of enjoyment, it was checking off all the boxes. And it was really funny because, you know, I, I look back at all that stuff that's happened, and I can clearly state at this point in time in 2021, if all those bad things didn't happen, there's no way I would have been able to rebuild. 
There's no way I would have been able to rebuild and be successful to where I am. I needed all of that stuff to make me a bitter, angry person to propel myself and push myself to just go all in and just grind it and give me that drive to push forward. Seriously, that's... That is where the motivation and the drive and the mental health strength and the family support, that's where it came from. You know, I mean, I get, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, when you're trading stocks and day trading and all this stuff that people like to do to get rich quick and, you know, I'm going to buy Bitcoin and when it goes to $10 million a coin, I'm going to be a billionaire, right? You know, all, all these things, I'm not bashing crypto. I do own crypto and I actually do enjoy it. I think it's fun, but, you know, it's like a tenth of 1% of my portfolio. I just, I think it's fun. But, you know, it, it's one of these situations where I understand the importance of sometimes hitting bottom or sometimes just getting dragged through the mud, sometimes just getting hosed and sometimes just feeling like you've lost it all type thing. It, it, it I don't know, it almost rewires your brain. It rewires how you pull out of those situations. No, gig, no giggities in this video, but when you pull out, all right, fine, a little giggity for the pull out. When you pull out of those situations, you arise, I'm sorry, you erect as a different person. Giggity again. Seriously, you, you really do come out of those situations. And like, I look back at myself and decisions or old emails or old pictures of like myself from 10, 15 years ago in that 2000 high school era or college era of 2005 and jobs and careers in 06, 07. I look back at all that stuff. And, like, I don't even recognize who I was. Like, I'm like, who? Is that even me? Like, it's so weird how life does that. And then, of course, as you progress the cycle of people you're around, the people you surround yourself truly do make a difference. I know it's kind of weird sounding, folks, but if you surround yourself by a bunch of, I don't know, you guys can bash me, but, you know, college Rudy, and you're a bunch of woo girls, and you're just around these young, hot-looking chicks who are just having fun, and a bunch of guy friends who just want to go out and have fun, yeah, you're going to enjoy your right now moment, but you're going to pay the price for the rest of your life because you may not understand it, but you're going to regret not getting ahead and starting early. And you're going to realize how important that is, but you're not going to realize it until it's too late when you're in your 30s and some people 40s and 50s, some people 60s, and they realize, oh man, this sucks. So that's the problem. That's the problem with life. That's the problem with how human beings, unfortunately, what would be amazing is when someone dies, and someone's born, you could transfer all that data from the old guy to the newborn, and we could get a head start in life. Wouldn't that be nice? Like when you go into high school, you already have all the knowledge you have as a seven-year-old person, and you can start earlier in life and learn and grow quicker. Life doesn't work that way. Unfortunately, you know, for me, it took a tremendous amount of bad shit to happen for me to rebuild to what you see today on YouTube and for those of you new to the channel, all these cards or wealth or items and inventory, it just took, you know, 15 years of rebuilding and going through bad things to get to what you see today. And for those of you who are younger and saying, well, that's too late. I missed out. I can't start in 2021. I don't have any of this stuff. I used to think, I, I thought the same thing, ladies and gentlemen. In 2004 or 5, when I got out of college in 04 or 05, and I still got my first real brokerage job. And I was getting my Series 7 broker's license to really do my thing and studying at home. And I passed my exam. And I look back at that. And I thought the same thing. How does, how does some schmuck loser like me, nobody, in Jacksonville, Florida, how, what, how, what kind of opportunities am I really going to have in this world? I mean, let's be honest with you. I'm a dude. Look, look at me. What do I have? I got straight C's in high school. I, I got an automotive thing. I mean, what is my real future? Be straightforward. Honestly. Picture 2004, or I'm sorry, 2003, after automotive. I got a car dealership uniform on that says, my name is Rudy, and I'm doing oil changes. I'm borrowing money. I have a list of how much I borrowed. I'm living at home. I have my high school car, no money, no girl, no future prospects, no career. Seriously, there are many times I'm driving home. What? Seriously, what is my future? Uh, trust me, I had a lot of bitter nights like that. I mean, and honestly, you know what got me through it? Buying and searching on eBay and playing magic with friends. At the time, I think it was like type 2 or no, type 1.5, whatever it was 20 years ago. I don't remember. Playing Legacy and building my Urza's decks with all my Master Cores and Mind Over Matters and 
you know, and building my, you know, my cheesy IC manipulator artifact decks and things, you know. And, you know, it kept me sane. It kept me level. I played a lot of video games. I love the old Final Fantasies, the old Resident Evils, the old Parasite Eves, the old Einhanders, the old um, Ogre Battle Tactics, um, Jesus, man, Boulder's Gates, Diablo 1s, 2. I, I can't even remember all these things. Stone Keep. Uh, I was playing some of the car games, San Francisco Rush, The Golden Eyes, Perfect Darks, Zeldas. I, I can't remember this stuff, you know. And I, I'm going to wrap the video up here. But the point, the answer to this question to this individual, let me just readdress it. How does someone like that get to where I am today? Honestly, there is no set path. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hate to burst anyone. I'm not going to give you how to get rich quick. Sorry, I don't have a CD to sell you guys for $1,000 a month to go through my program. I, I don't have that. You know, I enjoy magic cards. I like to sell them. I have amazing patrons. I have a store. We sell things. We do things. We make videos. I mean, you know, to be very honest with you all, I don't have an answer for how you as a viewer can go from a regular individual to someone very wealthy or successful. I don't have a cheat sheet for you because I'm still a very firm believer. There are no shortcuts. You cannot get rich quick. Well, Rudy, what about Roaring Kitty? He did the GME. He made 40 mil. And that's an amazing story. And we can all idolize him. I idolize him. I think he's an amazing dude to have balls of steel. I idolize the guy. I am so proud to watch someone like that. It makes me feel good that a regular guy who used to have jobs in the brokerage world and broke off and unemployed and did his own thing. And he changed the world. And whether we realize it or not, that guy, you know, was it Keith? That guy changed the world forever. He will go down in history books. There will be movies made about him. He changed the world. And he was a nobody. And that's an incredible story. So for those of you watching this video, I don't know what it's going to take to, to raise you guys up in your personal situation. But everybody, I am a firm believer. And I know this is stupid and cliche and cheesy. And I got nothing to sell you. I don't have a CD. I don't got to get, I, I got nothing to sell you. I just want you to know, you know, there is something out there for everybody. There's someone out there for everybody. There is a career. There's a passion. There's something. And unfortunately, life is engineered to make it difficult. It's supposed to be tough to find. That's why most people don't find it. That's why most people are going to fail. That's why most people watching this video, they're going to be like, wow, I'm motivated. Two days from now, you ain't even remember this shit. You're going to be going to your job, some stupid manager, some stupid bill in the mail. You're not going to, you're going to be right back to the hamster wheel and you're not, it's, it's about, it's, I know it sounds so stupid, but it really is a perspective. It's a thought process. It's a state of mind. You have to view things, see things. And handle things differently. you got to have the alligator skin. you got to take the punches. How do you think I feel when I deal five, ten people who try to hose me, dispute, chargebacks, anything? Negative messages, attacks, the personal messages, this and that. How do you think I feel? But that you have to be able to stomach that. I would say swallow that, but I'm trying to keep it PG. You have to be able to swallow it. And you have to be able to move forward. You have to be able, a relationship with a significant other or a woman or a guy or whatever you're into is no different than a job and a career or an investment. You got to be able to take the good and the bad, meet halfway, and you need the other party to do things for you and you need to do things for them. And unfortunately, it is imperative and it is critical for bad shit to happen. You have to have, you know, people, Rudy, I've had so many bad things in my life. I'm down on my luck. I've had, I, I hear you. We've all been there. It is important. We must have the bad things. It is so critical to go through failure and mistakes and lose everything and restart. That is the, that is the human way. You have to be hurt. And you have to have bad relationships. You have to have bad jobs and shitty bosses and bad friends. That is part of life. That's what separates the Timmies from the Alphas that move up. And that separates the people from, you know, the Elon Musk who was one rocket away from just not landing itself to being bankrupt. That separates the difference between the blockbusters, the Enrons, the scumbags, the Bear Stearns, the Lehman Brothers. It separates the failure from the people who can pull through the darkest times. And you never really learn who you are until you hit the darkest times. And that's when you see people's true colors when they are in the worst moment. You learn who someone truly is. Have a great day.